Everybody and welcome to Eye of Soul Radio. I am psychic medium Jamie. You are Claudia. <laughs> Claudia. Now, usually if I'm on Zoom, you only see me because he's got everyone in the background, but I can't be rude and not have her be introduced immediately. Otherwise, she just sits here and smiles and looks pretty. So I'm excited for today's show because she is a mastermind, you guys, a mastermind body worker, energy healer, massage therapist, mother of three. My goodness, we can go on and on, right? Um, and what we're going to talk about today is how energy affects our physical bodies, how we acknowledge it, how we move through it, how we can give you suggestions on doing that yourself. Uh, you don't always have to go to us. There is some self-care practices that can be, you know, implemented in your day-to-day -day lives as well. Um, and how working through this body work can help you feel relaxed and pain-free. And I speak from my personal experience. I, it's all from my perspective from working directly with her now for over a year um, and watching actually her own transformation from when I first met her a few years ago. So we actually came into contact at an event. Um, I was guest reading to learn how to work in an event style forum. And I was totally drawn to her energy up front and gave her an energy which piggybacked with someone else's um, or gave her a reading that piggybacked off of someone else's. And from that point on, you know, I've met the family and we've hung out. So, I mean, it's really good to be able to make those connections and to watch people grow through their own journey as well. Um, you know, she assesses her clients, right? Providing that customized healing experience. You just don't go in. It's not the same every day. No, definitely not. It's definitely a new, new experience every every session that we have something new comes up even with the same person yes absolutely it's not going to be the same you guys uh so like i said she's a reiki master teacher so i love that you're teaching it now yes i'm very excited to be able to teach it now and such a beautiful modality that can help in so many levels especially when you want to do self-healing you guys exactly. again self-care is huge um how long have you been a massage therapist Two and a half years now. Has it been that long? It has been. <laughs> <laughs> wow, guy, I'm losing track of time. Um, so I want us to talk about, yeah, how that energy work combined with energy work, combined with the body work that you do, can move energy out that's stored in our muscles and cells and help us heal. Now, we are not going to claim at any point in the show that either one of us are going to be able to heal you. We are facilitators in your own healing journey, and it is your responsibility to continue that evolution, to continue that healing process, right? Um, with that being said, we're also going to show you how to transfer out that energy out of your body, whether it be through work with us or yourself. Um, and that, you know, how she actually has shocked numerous people I know on seeing in a different way that I see that a lot of people see and to get to the bottom of like core issues, like immediately. Um, two of my favorite stories is when I had you come over and do a massage for Spirit Walker Nicole. <laughs> 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 Spirit Walker Nicole comes out, she walks past me like one eye open, her hair's everywhere. And she's like, you did not tell me that she was one of us. And I'm like, well, why would I do that? That's no fun. <laughs> she's like, I have been through something and back. Um, and then we had uh, a kind of thank you to, to some of our friends who've been supporting us in this journey before uh, the pandemic. And she came and did some chair massages for us, for each person. And every single one of them came out like they have been through something. And they would just sit there and they were, are you coming back to us, LaShawn? Like, hello? She's like, what just happened? What just happened? What a compliment that is though. Totally, Have absolutely. everybody come in and just be floored at what you brought to the table, literally 
or chair um, to be able to help them, right? So a big question that a lot of clients have, I know for me, and I'm sure for you, maybe not phrased this way, is what is happening to me? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is this happening to me, right? Yes. So for you guys, have you ever been, have you ever had a time where you felt like everything was going downhill, right? I feel like an infomercial right now. Um, <laughs> then all of a sudden, this is the big part. Your back goes out you get a spasm, maybe your shoulder freezes up, your knee locks up, you've got weird pain in your hip, your foot's not acting right. And you're like, okay, this is one more thing, you know, to boot with what's going on in my life. You think this is happening because it's just out of the blue, but in reality, it's not. You know, this is a true definition of our physical bodies, holding energy in from our surroundings, our emotions, and our thoughts. So with that, like, what, what do you see what is most common within our physical body when we are overstressed, overtaxed, have a lot going on? Um, what's, what's one of the first things that, that goes on in that physical body? Oh, one of the first things is that there's a lot of tension build up. And the most common area that my experience has been in the neck and shoulders. <laughs> uh, by far, hands down, the, the neck and shoulders is one of the most uh, immediate where a lot of people, um, including myself, we hold our stress because part of it is through our communication issues, a lot of neck. It, it just tenses up and there's a lot of pain, limited range of motion, um, but it can trickle all the way down even to the lower back, depending on what we may be going on physically or emotionally, and like you mentioned in our surroundings, if there's been either a conversation that you can't have or even having some fear around it, that will cause those areas to tense up. And it can't, for some, it might not be so immediate to connect those dots that that is why. And that's kind of where I come in and say, is there something that you may want to say or having issues with communicating, whether it be with somebody else or more importantly, your inner dialogue, the communication you have with yourself is also another important part to uh, that. Inner dialogue sucks. Let's just be yeah. honest, people. We are not good to ourselves. Our inner dialogue is a mess. Um, so, you know, honestly, you guys, in my own experience, Claudia is a wizard. I, she's got a magic wand and everything. No, she doesn't. No, but she has some magic cups. So let me just tell you, those have been my biggest thing the past few weeks um, is cupping. Um, and it is, it's the emotional triggers, right? Yes. So whether we're sitting with a client doing a Reiki session, and we're getting the information and we're hearing them talk about it. And maybe it is that they're talking about physical, you know, things going on in their body um, or things that we're seeing that are going to become issues in their physical body. Uh, but then there's also those of us that go in and it is, I will get those terrible headaches that start from my shoulder, work its way up the side of my neck and resonate in one sphere of my head. And they can turn into migraines. They get to that point. And the first time that you really worked on me, you know, what a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and you're like working on my shoulder and you're like, oh, <laughs> what's going on? We've got some fear over here and some betrayal going up here. And I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> oh my, I was just like a, a mess at that point. I'm like, yes. And then what do you do from that point? So honestly, when you're working in these muscles with your meridians and, and all the different lines and, and stuff, I learned a lot from talking to you as well. Um, how do you know that it is fear? How do you know it's betrayal? What do these lines mean for people when, when you're explaining it, or even if there's someone else is explaining it? Uh, I am an empath first and foremost. And so right away, I felt this fear just coming over me, but also the betrayal, it was kind of my intuition works as a thought. It comes more as a thought, a knowing, and then it transforms into a feeling. So closing my eyes and kind of tuning in into what I'm feeling and what is coming through is what kind of led me to even just those words. Like I saw the word fear, saw the word betrayal, but I didn't see any details. And also kind of once we, we've already kind of built a relationship that I was comfortable enough to even say it that way too, where maybe before for just starting out, I wouldn't be as like, oh, well, this is what I'm feeling, <laughs> you know, right? and be more uh, walking through. And that's kind of what I use the meridians for. We all have energy lines within the body. And I address where that location, where it starts and where it, it, it ends and the emotion tagged to it. But I'm like, this, even though I explain it that way, I'm feeling actually this and more specifically into it. Um, so that's kind of where I go from there. So an empath and intuitive, you're using psychic senses, no? Yes. 
Mm. Yes. Uh-huh. So your claircognizance kicks in. Yes. Your clairvoyance kicks in because you can see into it. Yes. Right? Um, it, it's that you feel it. So the clairsentience is there. Um, so you're actually using all the different modalities that we have on that spiritual self. Correct. And that is intriguing to me because a lot of people, um, when they're doing Reiki sessions, just do the Reiki. They're just in the energy field. And in reality, we have to take it one step further. I mean, I know that we can see into those chakras that we can start to move into past life stuff and we can start to kind of see what's going on in the physical body and, and maybe feel the emotions around it. But when I teach my classes for Reiki, don't get this idea and steal it. <laughs> she won't. Um, but I really encourage them. We learn the psychic senses. We learn how to tap into them so that we're hearing it. We're connecting with their spirit team, our spirit team, our guides. So when you're doing massage work and you're combining it all together, are you also working with your spirit team? I am. Absolutely. Absolutely. Having a communication with them. If there's a question or kind of like I'm unsure of something, um, just kind of quieting my mind and hearing or trusting that the first thought that does come through is my guidance or is the answer or kind of the way I should go about in treating that particular area. Which was so cute, you guys, the last time. So she helped me the month before we were going to Maui because I really at that point could not walk with both my knees. They both have different issues. And I'm like, I, I need to be able to walk. I can't be in pain. And there was so much stuff coming in at that point that you were even getting excited about what you were seeing and feeling and then getting the validation. Like, oh my God, that flower I just saw yes. is up there. And like, you're putting all this together as well. So you're ever evolving and growing. Yeah. And that's what's really important, you guys, is in any of this type of work or any work you do in life to continue to evolve and grow. And that is, you know, something that I will always take. And I always take the stuff that she tells me and then I work on it, which is even more important so that I don't have this come back or to that degree. So when we get back from break, you guys, we've got, I've got some cards, but we're going to do some more chit chatting, but we're also going to do some energy readings. And what I mean by energy readings is, is that if you have something physical going on in your body that you're open to sharing, and it, I, we don't really want a bunch of details, right? right. Um, if it's your left shoulder or where the pain's starting from, put it in the chat boxes, both on Transformation Talk Radio and Shades of Spirit. And let us, during these breaks, really move into your energy and kind of see what's going on and give you some suggestions on how you might be able to alleviate that process as well. But if they wanted to book a session with you, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, the best way to reach me is by um, either texting me or calling me. What's your number? 858-761-5407. That's the easiest way. You can't go wrong with that. You guys can go back and listen to that. We also have that posted on our information as well so that you can get a hold of her at any point in time. So throw some stuff up in the chat box, you guys. We will see you right after this break. Welcome back, everybody. I'm psychic medium Jamie. You're listening to Eye of Soul Radio with my fantastic guest, Claudia. Yay! I like just Claudia. Yay! <laughs> Claudia, where do you work out of? I work out of an office in Temecula, and I also do house calls. <laughs> you know what a saving grace that is, you guys. <laughs> and we're in Oceanside, so she goes to Temecula. You go to San Diego, right? I do. Some in Del Mar as well, Solana Beach, and I even have some clients in San Juan Capistrano. So I do travel even all the way over there. Sometimes we got to do that. yeah. But and then even northern of Temecula, Wildemar, Fallbrook, um, I mean, um, uh, Marietta. Menifee, Menifee, those areas. Those yep. areas as well. We all cover the same spots. I love it. <laughs> um, and so you guys, she does make house calls, which is really cool. We're going to get to what we're putting together together. What we're putting together together. That's a double uh, negative. So did I just cancel that out or what? Um, <laughs> as, as a package deal for you guys as well, to really to be able to get into that healing part of it, to get some spiritual messages and connections, a little bit of body work done and some Reiki work. I cannot wait to share that. So that will be coming up. So we're talking about what she does, and that is a little bit of everything. So what would you identify yourself as being, how do you label yourself? Um, I label myself as an intuitive massage therapist with specialty with res uh, Reiki massages. Oh, yes. Those, the Reiki massages by far are my favorite thing or modality to do because I feel like I can connect even on a deeper level. What may be going on? What is stored there? Um, sometimes seeing even just getting the message that it's a past life issue. Um, so that's where I feel the most connected, but I am also trained in just the like uh, deep tissue, neuromuscular is also just connecting the mind body. 
um, to what, what is going on. So, so for those that are not necessarily in tune to the Reiki or the energy work, I'm also available with other just regular modalities without the energy work. Do you do pregnancy massages? I do, yes. Prenatal massages, um, even reflexology as well um, is another one of my favorite things to also use or tools to use to see if there is something going on in the foot or your hands it could directly correlate to an organ within the body or somewhere else she is not wrong she has hit parts of my hand and i'm like what the hell did you just do and she's like well this is this one and this goes over here and this hits yeah. and i'm like and this is your blood and i'm like oh my god <laughs> never once has she been wrong oh well, thank you yeah i mean and it, and i do walk away from those especially when i can get them in sex like sessions right so you do mm -hmm. a few and then let my body work and heal itself exactly. and now i'm like okay well it's about time because i'm feeling that coming out of alignment but i never stop moving there's always things going on so i constantly need that energy to be shifted but there's also a story behind our pain right yes, absolutely so when I sit down with the client because I'm obviously not over there like, hello, let me massage you. No, that, that would be awkward and probably illegal. So we don't want to go there. No. Um, but I do want to know what's going on. I want to know what the story is. I want to discuss why do you feel out of alignment? What is going on in your personal life, your work life, your home life, you know, all of those. And then work into those chakras and be able to start moving that energy out. So it's a process for me. It's not just going in and doing the Reiki energy and like, okay, thanks. Have a nice day. I want to know the story. I want to be able to help you create a new story behind that as well. And that's where I do use my psychic senses and I tune in and I really want to know from their team or any family that comes through what's going on, how we can break that energy up, right? Yes. Finding those triggers and eliminating them with the client's move them into self-empowerment. So how many clients have you had that are like, oh my gosh, you have no idea what you did for me. I'm back in my space. I feel powerful again. It's actually, it's, I haven't kept count honestly, but it had, does happen a lot where some things come up that one, they had either blocked or just we didn't make a connection to it. So sometimes it's not clearing out and it's not, maybe not about or necessarily to clear out, but even just simply to acknowledge that that is there. And for that session, that's what all that is needed. Um, it's, it's not the intention to clear it out, but honestly, just to come back to balance to say, oh, okay, this is having a new direction and where to go. So I have had several clients give me that feedback and it just fills my heart because I know that, it's the right path. I'm on the right path and I'm helping. Like you said, we are a facilitator. We are not the one, I'm not the one creating the healing. It's really a team effort to, with the client and myself to give that guidance and to feel like this is what I needed. I don't know why, but this is exactly what I needed. I'm like, yes. It's your client. <laughs> it's yourself. Yes. It's your team right? And their team as well. Their team comes yeah. in strong. So for you, when you work with clients and know things, right, how do you weave that story in your head before you talk it out with your client? Because, you know, it's, that's yeah. a tricky part. You're, a tricky one. you're trying to massage, you got the Reiki going on, you got the story in there, you've got spirit around. How are you putting this together for them? And then how do you see it and then be able to, to tell them that without scaring the crap out of them? I know it's, it's a hard, <laughs> it, 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 it is a challenge, it can be a challenge, but I like to uh, teach a lot, so I kind of bring it into a more of a, a, a teaching. Like this is what is going on physically, and this is the, the, the meridian. I kind of start with that, the, the, the energy line, what the feeling is associated with that meridian. And then I say, but this is more kind of what I'm feeling. Does mm -hmm. that resonate? It may or may not. It, it, this is all just kind of what I, am I going through my filter, and this is what I'm feeling. But it, kind of leaving it up to them. I'm kind of what does it feel like for you? Does that feel like it is more anger or feel more like it's more frustration necessarily? Even I kind love of it that you round. just brought those two up, right? Yeah. How much of our energy that's stored, are you asking people, is this anger? Are you frustrated? Do you feel victimized? Like a lot of them. Yeah, exactly. So then it kind of leaves it up to them to, to fill in. It's like, it's just a kind of a guidance, but even though I, I don't say I, this is what you're feeling and it's tied into a past life or, or a trauma that you had in your childhood. No, nothing like that of sorts. It's more kind of a generalized and then we can hone in because they may not be ready to hear it either. So that's a, that can be a tricky situation too. But if they're on my table, more chances than not, they're willing to hear it. They're ready to 
to address it. So we go as little as possible, layer by layer, and kind of just guiding them through the breath work more than anything. They showed up. Yes. That's the biggest part. Yep. They showed up. Um, okay, perfect. We're going to go to Monica. We've got Annette, and then we've got Marietta. Marietta as well. So you guys, we're going to be working on that. So why don't we start before we go to break? We've got some time. Let's get into Monica. We've got about five minutes here before our break. Monica was talking about stomach issues and pain. So from, you know, you just kind of tune in at break. <laughs> She's getting a whole new lesson on psychic medium development and quickly <laughs> tune in. Um, what is it that you're picking up on for her? And then Monica, I pulled you a card out of the mystical shaman oracle deck as well. Okay, for, for Monica, as soon as I saw that the stomach, the stomach meridian deals with worry. That's the root emotion. And the time of life for the stomach is in the 40s and 50s, like later in life. <laughs> well, you're right. Come on. There. <laughs> and the next thing that the, the very first thing that came up was trouble digesting fiber, it's like fiber intake, where mm -hmm. the, just the kind of the right away, those things. Worry deals more with the future, kind of like looking into the future and that. So that kind of plays a little bit more role. It felt like a, like a stronger connection to just worrying about what is going to happen. And in regards more to health, this was coming through health wise. Um, so suggestions, um, whenever there is a trouble digesting or maybe not having so much fiber is going into bitters, bitters, as addressing the bitters and even just stomach uh, massages, maybe some issues with um, like uh, bowel movements or constipation, it could be either or. So bitters would be one that I would talk about or address with like uh, lemon peels or lime peels, like a little bit of it before or after the meal, but with as far as with massage is concerned, is kind of doing in circular motions and a clockwise motion whenever there is a, a stomach issue is how I would treat it. Perfect. And then what I got for you is that um, it's paid, it's card number 44, Monica. So we're starting, we're keeping this trend from Shade to Spirit last night, guys. And it's the sacrifice. And it's a beautiful card. I don't know if you have this particular deck, Monica, but it talks about to sacrifice means to make sacred. The sacrifice is an offering of gratitude made from the heart, a feast of love prepared for spirit. In olden days, sacrifices sometimes involved rituals in which blood was offered to the gods. You don't need to do that anymore. We don't, we don't do those type of rituals. Okay. Um, so it talks about for you, uh, the sacrifice asks that you offer spirit that which is most precious to you honestly, that's you. That's offering what you do, how you connect. Your offering will be sanctified and returned tenfold. So it is about that even exchange. It's about allowing yourself and our sacrifice could be just our vulnerability. It could be the connection that we want to build um, with spirit, but we have to let some of the stuff go. So we're actually becoming in that vulnerable vulnerable state in order to get that back. You'll be elevated to the altar at which you have been praying and meet the divine at the table with heaven, heavenly feast. You are welcome guest in the banquet. This is huge for you. It's about the next ascension for you. And it's about that even deeper connection with the God source energy, whatever your beliefs are. And it says your heart is the only worthy offering you can bring. Isn't that so true? Mm -hmm. It's that heart center, Absolutely. right? Life has been generous with you in so many ways. And you know what that generosity is. We just now to make it so that your physical body becomes whole again through the things that she's talking about. Um, and it also says, what is the one person or thing that you feel you cannot live without? It is time to offer it all to spirit so that it may unfold as it will. Do not cling to the old form or allow your sacrifices to weigh heavily upon you. You have sacrificed yourself and your dreams for way too long. Hallelujah, girl. I mean, that's exactly where you're at. Now is the time to rededicate yourself to your journey. When you make sacred, you open the doors to the infinite wealth. Do not delay. So as you're healing, work on this process as well, you guys. I still have my $75 special because you guys are so awesome and the referrals keep coming in. And I'm also offering a referral um, program. So if you refer one client to me, brand new client with a reading, or they could do a Reiki session, they could do an Akashic session, uh, you will get after their session, a one card pool that I'll do a reading on and I will email it to you. You refer two clients, you get two card pools. So I will do a reading, email it out to you as well. And if I get three clients from you, it is a free 30 minute reading. 
And that's just me giving back and showing the appreciation that I have for you guys, sending people my way, giving us new connections. It doesn't include group readings or events or anything where there's multiple people. This is just sending us a brand new client, somebody to work with, um, and you get something in return because I do appreciate what you guys do for me, for Shades of Spirit, um, the support that you give all of us. So stay tuned. We're going to be right back. Annette, you will be doing some throat energy work with us, I believe. So stay tuned, you guys. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Eye of Soul Radio. I'm Psychic Medium Jamie with my special guest today, Claudia Leo. Yay! So you guys, energy can affect all sorts of parts of our being, our body, our soul, our mind, right? It can also be affected by outside influences. So sometimes the energy that we're holding on to really isn't ours to be held on to. Exactly. So let me take you to that next tricky question. You got a husband and wife, right? I know you work with, with people that are spouses yes. and, and family members. Even you worked with my daughter, Yes. right? And you realize maybe that energy they're carrying isn't 100% theirs. It very well might be someone else in the family. Correct. So how do you work through that? Um, so well, my main goal is to have them feel like a safe space where they can just voice whatever they're feeling so with that dynamic kind of just make it's valid what you're feeling it makes sense it's okay to have it now it's kind of let's work through this particular issue so say for example that was there um i remember with abby was kind of the neck area mm -hmm. so okay let's work let's work with that let's try to release that work from the top to the bottom of that and then i started feeling like okay, this is not all hers. This isn't just what she she's holding on to. So it's never like a conversation that I had with you. It's just kind of helping her mm -hmm. deal with what she's going on at that moment. So that's very important to keep kind of it separate. And just when you did ask about her, like, nope, we work through it. She's, she's give her some pointers and we're working. So I never go into the details with what we discuss or anything, but it just makes it feel that they're hurt and that they're mm -hmm. seen. And that's more of my, my goal so that they can feel and work through it. So you're a therapist as well. Kind. You know, you know we, we are, we're <laughs> yeah. like the hairdressers and the nail salons. I, you know, I mean, that's the thing though, is to, to be heard. And so, you know, Abby at that point was what, 16 and a half yeah. when you saw her. And she has always suffered, my oldest daughter, from the huge knots in her shoulder that run up her neck and they give her headaches. And she is a kid that puts a lot on herself. But then she also is in the middle of, you know, what's going on in her own personal life. Yeah. So she took all of that on. Mm -hmm. And that was just the thing of being able to yeah, have that voice. Say with the husband and wife, like sometimes they're just they're like, okay, this is not yours. And they might yeah. just unload on the table, mm -hmm. but come out feeling a thousand times better and feel like they are moving in a, a positive direction as well, which is, you know, exactly what we want for that. Um, so what about a net in the throat? Cause the throat actually seems to be a very common, at least from my experience, yes. um, issue that, that people, I don't say issue, but, um, you know, there are things that go on in that throat that does cause us pain or that we can't swallow or sore throats. It could be jaw pain. It could be teeth issues, like all in that section. So what, do, what are you kind of getting for a net? For Annette, what the first thing that kind of came to mind is comfortability, meaning like I what came to mind was kind of feeling stuck. So like um, the, either the pillow that she's using or something just phys from that physical standpoint that it's not comfortable. So causing um, there to be a lot of tension, even some numbness feeling I started feeling like coming down the neck and down to my arm. Um, and then the next thing after the, the, the physical connection to it was the communication, but and a mix of two emotions, anger and fear. It's maybe kind of a mixed or that it all kind of alternates. Um, either sometimes the anger comes in or the fear, but it's all, it's all in and speaking the truth, almost kind of having a fear and voicing what, what she's feeling. So having some of a mix of all of these things, it's kind of what I picked up. It's not just one thing necessarily. It's, um, I feel like it's also something recent, like this isn't uh, like that that's been there for a while. It's kind of just a new development, but that's more what I'm uh, feeling from Annette. Uh, one thing I could suggest would be as soon as you wake up, start doing shoulder rotations, like shrugging your shoulders and then 
back. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, but shoulder rolls. Yeah, just shoulder rolls. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That just to get some movement in there so it's not as, so it doesn't stay as stiff because repetitive motion and the stress are the kind of the top two things that will cause our muscles to tense up. So having more movement within that area will help switching a pillow if you can. Um, that will also help along with it. Now, as far as the, the dealing with the anger and the fear um, and, and, and speaking your truth, so just writing it down or if you're driving in the car, just that's when you say it. That's when you voice it. <laughs> it needs to be released one way, shape or form. So if it can't be said directly to the person or um, maybe it's multiple people, then do it in a w- place where you can just at least say it out loud. I love it. So it's more verbal on her than writing. Absolutely. And we need to go into healing the heart. Perfect. I have this new ring light. Thanks, LaShawn. I really like it because it works with my pictures. Healing the heart. So a lot of times people will have issues between that heart and throat. Hits right in that thymus area. And they want you to know that when you're wounded emotionally, you need time to regroup and find your center. Um, So it's something that you've lost within the past year. Um, that is causing you also not to be able to speak, not to be able to bring yourself to maybe even say it, right? Just to hold that energy in that space. But sometimes, I mean, how many times have you noticed that when one chakra is out of alignment, more than likely it's combined with another one and it's healing both of them to kind of get the best benefit. Correct. Oh, absolutely. Um, So for you, healing in the heart in all aspects is your priority now. Nothing else matters. Um, And it talks about important steps to heal yourself and become willing to release the pain of the past. And when we hold the pain of the past, it means we're not communicating it, whether it be to others or within ourself. So having these conversations in the car, having these conversations when no one's there, but this is where I don't want you to hold it in your head. A lot of us might talk to your spirit team in your head, but I really want you to find that time, like she said, and embrace it and feel it and say it and let it go and watch how that releases within you. And that's the really cool thing about energy work. And not only will it release that, but then it will also lessen that, that feeling in your chest as well. Yes. Oh my goodness, Annette, you've got this. You absolutely got this. We just had one hell of a year and we just need to now start the healing process of it. Absolutely. So we've got Mariette. Oh, yes. Is that right there? And then I've got Diane on here. So you're up and Audrey, you are also up for this, the last segment we've got. So don't go anywhere, you guys. So what do you have for Mariette? For Mariette, um, the first thing that came to mind was um, specifically in the low back, the right glute, I got like a a father energy, their father, husband, uncle, son, just a male energy. And what's particular with that one was of moving forward or like unable to move forward. There's still a little, um, I felt more kind of like sadness and that tied in right with the right hand, the thumb. That energy line from the lung to the thumb is um, the energy line of uh, grief. But yeah, I feel more I've heard, loneliness. I've heard that a lot lately when she's in my <laughs> thumbs and I'm like, yeah. what's this? Grief. Yes. Oh, never mind. So it's, that's the root emotion, but sometimes it can play as feeling lonely, feeling really sad, um, even feeling um, abandoned. Mm-hmm. That's that's a that's a good one there too. That's kind of what I felt here too. So somewhere tied in with with those three. There's a male energy presence, and it's just unable to process that, and that just kind of keeps get being stuck too. Um, so stretching also goes a long way with the low back, kind of bringing the knee close to you. Um, it will stretch out those the glute muscles and the hamstrings with your thumb, kind of. Uh, even just pressing right where the wrist and the, the thumb begins, right in the wrist area, just pressing on it will help to <laughs> relieve any kind of, yeah, like it doesn't <laughs> have to be too, too deep, but just that will help um, clear out, even just pulling on the thumb, like if you were trying to crack the thumb, just to help move out. When our energy does move out of our body, it's through our face, through our hands, and through our feet. So guiding any exhale, any deep breaths going out through those areas, especially that thumb for you, Marietta, um, will help uh, so much move out that energy or even just like I mentioned, just acknowledging, oh, yes, I am feeling this way. And it has been for a while. Do I even want to move forward? No, not yet. Okay, perfectly fine. This is where you are. So at least acknowledging that can be so beneficial to then be able to just let your body relax a little bit and say, yeah, this is where I'm, this is where I'm at right now. I love what you just said. If you are not ready, that is okay. 
but exactly. baby steps. Yes. Maybe you hold here for two seconds and you exactly. were like, Oop, that really is still sore. I'm not, yep. I'm not ready. Yep. The next day you might go three and it's a process. That's why it's healing. Now you actually got the willing to release. Now this awesome. is the fourth time this week I've seen dandelions, which is giving me a huge sign because dandelions are not my norm. Um, so this is also a piggyback for me on this part of it as well, uh, which is why I love doing this work, but it's talking about yielding to the divine plan releasing attachment to form, especially if something isn't what you expected or wanted and leaving room for serendipity. So sometimes you have to let go of the struggle to find the answer and working through your own self-work. That's exactly what we're talking about here. It doesn't mean giving up altogether or losing anything. It's your co-creative partnership with the divine. Give and take is necessary. Do your part by setting your intentions to take any necessary actions, but then you must surrender. Surrender, surrender, surrender. That is what's really important for you right now. The divine plan is for each of us. When acting on this faith, you may find that your intense desire for something translates into feelings of attachment and entitlement. Right now, you're going to let that go, and you're going to move into your own space and be empowered in that. So work through your higher powers at be, whatever those are, allow yourself to start working on that energy yourself. You've got some cool tips and tools from Claudia right now on doing so. And this is going to help you release this energy and this pain. I guarantee you it's going to let go. Now, how do they get a hold of you again? And where do you work out of? Because now they're like, oh, shit, she really knows her stuff. Let's go. <laughs> I work out of Temecula and I do house calls as well, kind of north, north of Temecula, even south in North County, San Diego. Um, best way to get a hold of me is by text or call uh, 858-761-5407. All right. And since we got a couple of you left, let's take a shorter break. Jacob, we'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back, everybody. This is I Have Soul Radio. I'm psychic medium Jamie with my guest host, Claudia. She's hard at work, you guys. She is hard at work. So while she's tuning in to Diane W. and Audrey for a second, uh, one of you is giving me severe pain on my right side, right on the outside of my spine, kind of where that kidney area is, but I know it's my back. And I can't wait till she gets done with you so I can release your pain. So this is fun. Thank you so much. Um, but you guys, we're talking about how energy is stored in our physical bodies and how we can actually move it out both ourselves and with the help of a fantastic, as I'm calling her wizard today, <laughs> uh, Reiki master teacher. She does massage therapy. She does body work. She's an intuitive. She's an empath. And she works with your energy, your team on being able to really dive in and get exactly out what needs to go through that emotional release um, and through the physical release as well. And what we're putting together is we're putting together a spa day with spirit, right? No, I don't do facials. I mean, I could, I could get the masks. I do it with my kids, but this is more of a party that you're going to host yourself until I get into my office. And then we can also offer them there. But if you want to have a girl's day, right. Or even a date night that husband, men like massages as well. Right. Um, and you want to kind of connect on spirit and get some messages from them, maybe some Oracle cards or connect with your loved ones. This is all different ways that we can connect and that we can start to process and move energy out and offer something different. So you supply the champagne to your group if that's what you choose. Um, and we're gonna supply the actual energy work for that. Um, so you can um, book this with me. You have to go to Shades of Spirit LLC. It eventually will be a tab that you'll be able to click on, but you just wanna say you're interested in the spa and spirit day. Um, you can host it at your home, probably around 10 to 12 people max, because that's a long time for her and a long time for me to have to be engaged in that. Plus she's actually doing all of the work physically. <laughs> um, but we can come to you and have these parties. And we're also going to have an add-on to that package, which is working with celebrity chef Nicole Moreno. So if you want to do some cool little, you know, appetizer boxes or dessert boxes or just some finger foods, you can add that onto your package and then you don't have to do a darn thing. Um, you supply all your own beverages. So that's the only thing that we request. Other than that, we bring the table to you or the massage chair to you or both um, all of our cards, all of our decks, and then we can bring those snacks and foods as you for you as well. So if you're interested in that, let me know. So what do you have for Diane W? For Diane, was soon as I saw the low back pain and I started feeling too right kind of in the sacral area. So right below the belly button area and um, what comes to mind is more of an inner child wound, more like a trauma, um, 
uh, not sure if it's, this is like, it's a physical trauma or emotional trauma. That's part's a little hazy, but there is some trauma there. And the main emotions that I felt was, or what it, what I could connect with was shame, fear, and anxiety, more of that anxious, anxiety kind of nervousness feeling. Um, and then issues with digestion also came through. So that even though it's a low back pain, our low back is directly correlated to our front, the, the, the stomach area. It's like a tug of war between the, our backside and the front side of the low back. And our, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, that it, is it a fun fact to explain a lot of what the hell goes on with my back at times. Definitely. So if there is some kind of digestion issues, more often than not, the low back will feel it, but in, but it is stemming or it, the root cause of it is from any kind of digestion issues in the front. Um, so it does, this one is kind of, um, it does feel a little heavy in here in this, this area kind of made me realize too that when you're, that you're feeling it too, it's, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it, this one, this one I do feel like has been there for a very long time. I know Diane, so I knew this was her pain. I didn't realize that it was going on. She had shots for it, but I absolutely, because now it's pretty much gone. It's dissipating. So thanks, Diane, for that. Again, we're very connected. <laughs> um, so I hope that makes sense. Yeah, the, with this one, it's, it's to, to be able to um, kind of m either move through it or kind of address it. Um, this one, again, I would go back to the bitters, any kind of digestion that will help with that. Um, but as far as any kind of stretches or, or being able to, to hold this is also bringing those knees back up to your chest, releasing that low back, more the glutes area to physically move that. As far as the, the inner child, trauma, shame, and fear is finding things that make you have fun, to joy. That sacral energy is all about like having fun, pleasure, what not just sexually or essentially, but just tuning in into what as you as a kid like to do when you and do that and have fun. If it were to be something coloring comes to mind, something with art, artistic, um, a creative outlet of your choice that you resonate with that feels good. That can also help move out some of that energy out from there. Diane, book a session with her. I'll give you her information. <laughs> You're going to need it. And she's down Del Mar. And all, so Point Loma is not too much farther for her. So yes, she can come to you as well. Um, for me, I got the sun card out of the shamanic deck. So it's all about the masculine and feminine. It's about balance. Um, in some cultures, the, fun, the sun is the foremost masculine force and others, it's feminine and her power. It's the most brilliant light for all beings to allow life to sprout from the dark which is kind of goes with what you're talking about, that darkness yes. from that inner child work. It can be gentle and warming, close to sun or sunrise or sunset, or it can be destructive as in the zenith during a scorching summer. So it's finding that balance. Have you been hibernating? Have you been in introspection? So yes, you have, and now you're coming out of that. It's time to come out of your cave and start giving that life force energy to yourself. Um, shine your light in that darkness and humor and cut out and play. So that's funny. You said that get out and play. Yes. That's what it says in the book guys. <laughs> wow. It's like, she knows what she's talking about. Um, so that's the big part for you as well as really connecting on that level, Diane. Um, oh, I love it when everything comes together on totally. that part of it. Uh, okay. So which months are you doing these spa days? If you're going to host one, you book it with us. Uh, once I get a spot to where I can host it somewhere, um, that might be more mid to end of summer, uh, because I want to have that space set up. But if you guys are interested in hosting one and you've got the room for either a massage table or just a massage chair, which, you know, I had a smaller room. So the chair worked out well when I held one of these parties. Um, and then you've got a room for people to be able to have readings in the circle as other ones are working on their healings. That's all we need. Uh, all right. So what about Audrey? Okay. With Audrey, the back and the shoulder, it's been lately and then mostly recent too. Okay, so with this one, this shoulder, I feel more on the, the right shoulder is what where I feel the more um, heaviness and tension. Um, so sometimes with this one is about uh, connecting with the, the small intestine meridian. So it, it does go, it exits out the pinky and it feels so heavy. So when I feel this, it's like a hard time of letting go hard time of 
just processing. It, it, our small intestine absorbs all the nutrients from our body. So if there's something there, like you're not being able to absorb or get your, um, the benefit or the best things that you can get around your surrounding, there's a block right there. Um, with the low, low back, is it kind of more low back? I do feel that's more mid to low back mm -hmm. where I'm feeling it. And this is more solar chakra and root chakra. Those two are coming up. So solar dealing more with, um, your self-worth, your confidence, and then the root, the root is finding survival. So a combination survival being grounded and secure. Those two things are kind of linking together and having a almost like this battle, this tension, like this, the back is giving out, the shoulder is, is all kind of stiff and not being able to move is more what I'm feeling. Um, she says, yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for that um, validation. So it's just an internal struggle where it's like, what I felt like feeling lost. Like, what do I choose? Do I go this way? Do I go that? Do, is it time to let it go? Is it time to really like feeling like you're not validated with what you're feeling. That's more what I feel here. Like, is this even valid and more than anything, um, is this even right? So kind of just tuning into that and being able to work through that will, will more movement again, any type of movement, any stretches, even what I feel here is kind of just raising my arms, like saying hooray, just moving, <laughs> moving it out up and down. And um, with the back, I get more just like a jumping, moving, like jumping jacks is more what I see, like just trying to do even squatting, so doing squats will kind of help move that. And then finally decide, okay, once you are rested, once the, it all, the, physically it's moving out, then come drop down to your heart center and say, this is, this is what, I, what I need to do now. This is what feels right. That's how you know when whatever choice you pick, that one that brings you the most peace, that's the one. I love it. I have your card, Audrey. I'm going to send it to you privately so that we can finish off the show here. But it's opening to discovery. So that freaking goes exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Uh huh. Yeah, like when you're standing in your own Akashic records, which is true. So if you guys book an Akashic past life records, we're connecting with your blueprints reading with me. We can get into some of these things as well that maybe you carried from a past life or that you've put out in the records that we can help you clear up as well. But if you think about this, all of this is tied in these different ways to where we can let this go, right? And that's the biggest part of it. So one more time, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, best way to get a hold of me is through my phone number, text or call 858-761-5407. Fantastic. Book your parties with us. Get more information from Shades of Spirit LLC. If you want to book a reading with me, or you've got people you want to refer, they can go to shadesofspirit.com. Always find us on YouTube at Shades of Spirit as well. We thank you guys for joining us this evening. This was fun. And look at you what? doing all of this without touching anybody today. Yeah, no, oh, it's, it's a whole awesome. different level. <laughs> Woo! All right, you guys, have a good evening. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. All right, you guys, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening in on Eye of Soul Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com with me, psychic medium Jamie. Return here next time so you can explore more of the lower level energies, realms, or dimensions. We will go through more darker spirit stories and provide more guidance and self-growth to those who need it. For more information about me, Psychic Medium Jamie, and the Eye of Soul, visit eyeofsoulradio.com. That's eyeofsoulradio.com. Eye of Soul Radio only on transformationtalkradio.com. See you next time.